I'm pretty honored, anyway, to be here in the Maker Fair and make it to the last day of the of the fair, still alive after all that. So much, so many talks and so many interesting artists that have been, that, are, that all of us have been working with. And thank you, Valentino, for for inviting us to be part of such a great, amazing event with all the challenges of the, you know, pandemic and how to put this together digitally is really unbelievable what you guys have been able to do. And uh, and to Valeria, who's been like the right hand for, for all of us. Uh, so uh, oh, I, I say, uh, I just say hello and I will, I will jump to another meeting and then back as a public, okay? Exactly. Yes. See you right in some uh, minutes. Uh, guys. Bye, Valentino. Hi. So, the, um, anyway, the, uh, Juan, who of you want to start with? Um, the, uh, I just want to say to everybody, uh, Attractor is an interdisciplinary group that emerged in 2017 as a union between artists who work around the relationship between technology and art. And it's a uh, his members have approaches in very different areas from electronic to sound, synthetics, performance, programming, animation, VR, augmented reality, and the creation of objects from machines, many of them recycle machines. Combining analog and digital technology, attractor designs and develops installations and experiences based on a concept that blurs the boundaries between art and science. Um, yeah, I know attractor for, um, several years, uh, probably, I don't know, six years. Uh, and then it's, uh, and I've been fascinated by the, uh, by the uh, versatility and how like uh, they, they are one of these uh, typical artists that I usually like read about in, in history books or, uh, or in fiction books. <laughs> where, like, uh, artists that have like uh, superpowers in a way. Yeah. They, they are the people like, you know anything that is uh, a challenge, or they are—they don't know how to do it, but they are interested in it. They wanna—they're like, we'll do it. We'll figure out how to do it. We'll, we'll uh, develop the software, or we'll learn how to work that machine. So that's been uh, always the like a trailblazer of uh, inspiration, and uh, and in the sh in the short time that they've been together, which is like uh, what. Seven, no, it's time seven, well, it's time in 17. But, but Juan Cortez, for example, has been doing his uh, solo artist career for, for many years, and then yeah. everybody else was coming from uh, you know, different angles of uh, you know, music. Alejandro experimenting with uh, electronic music, and uh, and and you know, so and and Blondie with uh, dance performances, and uh. And Juan also with a uh, maker and hacking and experimenting all the different things. So, was, um, uh, so I got to know Juan first. Um, he was coming from the from the world of art, and then I got introduced to the whole group. So, the uh, why don't you uh, tell us like uh, first, uh, Juan, what is the relation between like uh, what you've been always doing? Uh, and is uh, and now attractor, which is uh, sometimes I cannot really differentiate between one and the other because the two are like so <laughs> intertwined. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I know that you have a specific. You you are like a very deep interest in science and philosophy. Oh yeah, you know that. So that's kind of one of the things I see that are part of the, of the group. Yeah. yeah. Shall I put the video? Do you want me to please, put it? Please. Let's start with the video. Let's so because the video. people that are not very familiar with the with your yeah, work. Right. Yeah. yeah.
Okay, so that's our first, uh, first like, a couple of images and I try to. Um, so yeah, I mean, um, my interest in, in science start with, started with my father, who is like a very prominent scientist here in, in Colombia. Uh, and I grew up looking at him and, and seeing his processes and trying to understand at this uh, in very interesting world that he that he has. He he's a scientist on geography, on soils, which is a like very important subject here in Colombia. Um, but I always thought like in 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 Colombia and in Latin America, particularly, there were a lot of different ways to understand, for example, soils and the problems of, of the earth and the problems of 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 our, you know, our, our understanding of, of the environment and so on. So actually, uh, and, and look, luckily for me, on, on, I guess for us, the, the interest in science became, uh, with time, the interest for different ways to approach or to understand, understand the world, because the world is not uh, meant to be understood or understood in just one way, but in several ways, one of which I think could be art. You know, um, so that's how that interest started. And of course, in, in 2017, I, I talked with Alejandro, with, with Juan Camilo, with Blondi, with uh, Juan Jose, and I, and I talked to them and I, and I said, okay, guys, uh, we can do things together. I know you all from different places um, and together, I know which are under, uh, which are interest. And then we can start like plotting and, and thinking also on some projects together. And that's how a tractor started, actually. Yeah. And is that, so like, where does the, but a lot of what you work of a tractor uh, comes based on science, pretty yeah. much, if not everything. Is, uh, yeah, so how, how has that influenced the whole group? Where was everybody interested in science from the beginning? Well, uh, um, yeah, on. probably. Well, I, I got interested in, in, in science. I, like all, all my life, being well, science has been something uh, really amazing for me. But I guess um, at the university, I started to to maybe understand science in a different way. Um, just uh, reflecting on how scientific method could be applied to to just anything and I started experimenting with 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 uh, another kind of science you know like maybe applying scientific methods to your experiment of mine um, like for example uh, I start uh, started getting really interesting in in electromagnetic and um, electromagnetism and especially on on the sound of, of the electromagnetism <laughs> I know the electromagnetism doesn't doesn't produce sound as we know it but um, there are ways we can we can still hear the manifestations of, of that energy and um, I started like working uh, um, around coils and started uh, exploring sounds. Mm -hmm. Of, of the, the electronic devices around me <laughs> um, actually that was that from that came my thesis that that search of, of sound within the electromagnetism and started work uh, looking for 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 resources for strange resources of, of electromagnetism and I found um, a, a really great um, resource that was the electronic waste um, so I began to to collect tons of electronic waste from everywhere and uh, I just liked it like to like that, that those those devices were kind of uh, damaged in some way forgotten and I started plug them in uh, plug them in um, like turn them, turn them, turning them on. Right. and capturing their sounds and that became that became my thesis it, it was a really amazing process and actually that's when um i invited juan to to be my, my one of my i don't know in english the judges one of the judges of, a jurist 
one of my jurists of my thesis and uh, we found that we had a lot in common and actually that's when we started to work together. Yeah. Right. So anyway, these, uh, these, 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 uh, for the ones that are not in Colombia that are listening to this, you know, like uh, Colombia was a country that is, it has a big tradition on all these uh, repurposing of materials because uh, the country first, you know, for many years, in, you know, it was kind of uh, closed off pretty much because of the, the intense violence that was going on in the country. So not many people went there, uh, the people couldn't really travel much. And also the, um, all these uh, disposable culture that we have in North America and Europe uh, was not really part of Colombia. They had to like work with what they had. And uh, so yeah. if something broke, they just they didn't have any other solution than to fix it. And I think that was a, that been a blessing and a curse. Of course, you know, the, the problems that come with it, the, the good ones are that it's very resourceful country. And the, uh, you don't throw anything away. And from there, so it has, a, it has determined also a certain style of, uh, of, you know, in the artistic practices. And the, uh, that has been kind of a more inwards country and whatever they see from, uh, you know, this was before the, the internet, you know, when the internet started taking over everything, then, you know, of course it was easy because you, you could download programs, you could do everything, but it's that things have been catching up. And Colombia has now become one of the countries where there's a lot of the software is developed, a lot of the, you know, big tech companies from North America and uh, Europe are uh, using Colombia as a way to, to develop programs and all these software uh, capabilities because people are very, they have learned through all these decades to be very resourceful, very creative in very different way. Than, uh, so how, how do you guys, why don't we see, start with some visuals and then we talk more. Yeah, uh, that, the, the that's what you're saying. That, that, that yeah. change in Colombia between, between us being resourceful, resourceful and us being like the Silicon Valley of Latin America. That's yeah. quite that's quite a but, problem for us actually, but but, but yeah, but, uh, uh, let me start by because Asher wants us to show like the Supreme video and then we can continue but, the thanks. conversation. We cannot hear any, I cannot hear any sounds. Um, let me share again with sounds. What are we seeing here? Uh, this is a machine that we built uh, to reflect on the on black matter and the, the quest to, to find black matter. And the beginnings of that investigation that was around the, the, the formation of the galaxies and the way they they move. So we were reflecting on that, and uh, we always had thought about the, 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 the paradigm uh, that forms around the uh, instrumentation, in which the last, the, the, the last, the last sensing, the last sensor of that machine is always the eye, the human eye. So, so we, 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 we thought about the machine that was very good, but uh, at the same time was <laughs> very, very advanced or uh, very complicated to, 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 to show that that machines can create emotions, that uh, science 
Noise instruments can reflect illusions. Couple of illusions. So. So. So uh, the machine is about that. It's about that construct that looks very complicated and that produces something that is based on a very simple uh, error. This, this machine is, is based on errors mostly because uh, we're stumbling uh, and always found uh, ways to, 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 to produce uh, interesting effects just by, by, by mistake or by casualty. Yeah. So it was very interesting to think about machines uh, about that way and machines in the scientific in, in the scientific uh, space. So, um, so Juan, um, um, Juan Pablo. Yeah. So, <laughs> what is the? Um, so we have here like how many Juans? Uh, Juan Pablo, Juan Jose. Oh, we just have Jose Alejandro, and we don't have Juan, Juan Blondi. Juan Camilo. <laughs> so the uh, hey, and like what what about you, uh, Blondie? Like what has been your um, how have you been involved in the group since the beginning? Yeah, so I study with well, our undergraduate program. We share with Alejandro and Juan Cortez and myself. We were in different. Uh, semesters but the connection at the beginning was maybe through photography and video art and then that uh, changed a little bit to the realm of sound and we were working in small projects before but then the connection became more uh, strong when we were developing pieces about technology with lasers and how maybe the body can interact with other pieces of machinery. And then it was for me a, a, a starting point for pondering about the relationship between the body, the mind and the technology and how you perceive yourself in, in, in your country, in the world, and also in the ecosystem in relationship with others and also meaning animals and plants and maybe oh. the, the own uh, planet where you live in. That's why we also work with the project, The River, because is trying to, to, to understand your body as an archive of experiences and also an archive of information and how your body can be an input in circuitry, uh, maybe with lasers or maybe with sensors in your body, the, ten the, the, the tension in your muscles and that how that creates movement and uh, performance. So that was like the, the point when we intertwine all our work like video, photography, uh, sensors, Music performance. performance, music, Actually, and so uh, on. You know, late, later in a few minutes, you guys could show us some of the video or the music performances that you guys do. Which are very intertwined with, uh, between science, uh, how do you call that? Industrial techno. It's the, sure. like this, this is a project uh, that we presented at ICEA, the International Electronic Arts. Okay, so I wanted, uh, could you explain to us what we are going to see here? What are these um, visuals, the sounds, where are they coming from? Because they are not just techno. There is something else that behind it. Yeah, um, this was a project we did, one of our first projects with, with you, Asher, with Hyphen Hop. Uh, we did it in, we did it in 2017, and it had, uh, it was based on the, on the sounds of bees and of the concept of, of a swarm. So we actually, Alejandro and, and, and Juan who went into a, into a place where they, where, they had, where they had the bees and the, and the whole uh, structures and they captured the sound. And then we started uh, working with that sound and we started synthesizing that sound to create like a whole experience about the communication and the different ways uh, the bees communicate uh, with their hive. And, and between them, which is like a fascinating subject because 
uh, the, 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 the whole aspect of communication in this could be like a whole a science, you know? So this is like, like techno mixed with that concept of, of biological uh, sounds of, uh, yeah, that, that's, okay. that was like the, the, con the concept in, behind this concept. So some of, the, so some of the, the sounds that we are seeing here are from the sounds of swarm, but I also remember bats, like some sharp sounds, you know. Um, but, uh, what was the other thing? Fireflies? And, uh, yeah, we, we capture insects here in, in, in uh, La Sabana de, de Bogota, which is like a beautiful place. The Plateau, of, the Plateau of Bogota, yes. The Plateau of Bogota, yeah. Yeah, so yeah we, we capture all these sounds through... Sound. through through sound system uh, radars that you guys uh, that you guys created, developed by yourself, actually. Okay, can we see a little? Can we see the video now? Of course. You're muted, Asher. Oh, sorry. Yes, that was a that was a pretty interesting uh, concert because it was part of ICEA, and then it's the, having all these uh, scientists, techno people there working science and listening to to bees in techno. Yeah, was, uh, quite quite an experience. And and you guys continue with this also. Uh, this is one of the elements of your work. That you do all these science works and projects like CERN, and at the same time you continue doing the music, which is part of the mo most of your projects have sound. Pretty much. Oh, yeah, that's fundamental. So that's that's one element. So how did you end up getting the CERN, um, getting body to be part of Arts of CERN? Oh well. So uh, can we see the project? That maybe they cut the the piece in uh, in the exhibition Quantica, perhaps, and then talk about it? Oh, OK. Let, let me introduce it a, a little bit, or, or probably Ali can introduce it while I put the video on, on Quantica, OK? Yes. Uh, so so these was um, these guys were uh, proposed to CERN, to the Arts of CERN program, and they, they were selected. Um, in the I'm on a, I'm on a presented I'm on a group of very you know top artists working in science and tech around the world, and the exhibition started at the Art in Liverpool, Foundation for Art and Creative Technology, where it has taken traveling to different parts of the world. So here we see the show of a quantum. Okay, so a little bit about, about the history of this of this project is that um, we actually were invited to, to be part of the of the, of the application of, of the of the grant called Collide uh, in 2018, uh, and we started thinking, okay, like we don't know anything about quantum physics at the moment. We didn't knew anything, but. Um, we, we quickly started like looking together with also with a philosopher and a, and a biologist, the philosopher called Santiago Arcila and the biologist called Sofia Rojas. We started thinking, okay, which are the projects that CERN has right now in their, in their, yeah, 
in their facilities. And we found this amazing, amazing experiment called clouds. And clouds was an experiment that tried to uh, try to simulate or to create a, like a very complex simulation on how the clouds have been evolving from the last 2000 uh, or 300 years. No, 300 years, something like that. Like all the industrialization process of the of the of the of the cloud formation, uh, and then we started seeing like there were some very very deep parallels between the experiment at clouds and and the actual beliefs and understanding here in Latin America, particularly in Colombia, in the region of Piraparana, of the of the actual uh, importance of clouds in the regulations of the environment. What is Piraparana for the ones that don't know what that is? Well, Piraparana is a, is a, is a region, actually. Yeah. It's a region close to, close to a river, and it's actually a, also a, um, a way to understand like a whole culture and a, a whole indigenous culture that develops around that part of the river. Um, but, but what was deeply understanding is that the science of Piraparana and their beliefs and their theories were uh, that were formed or, or they were born like uh, a thousand years ago, were actually or came up to the same conclusions that the scientists at CERN uh, came with the conclusions like three or four years ago with the clouds experiment, and those are different difficult conclusions because uh, what what the conclusions were. Uh, had to deal with the importance of clouds in the regulations of the of the environment, and also had to deal with the with the fact that the like what we throw to the to the soils and the, our contamination has to do with the way the clouds are being formed. So nowadays in the Anthropocene, in this era that we live on, we have like particular clouds that were not part of the world like two two hundred years ago. And that's because of the of the of the industrial waste and so on and so on, and and that connection, that parallel between these two ways of understanding the the world, were so interesting for us that we did and we wrote a project based on that, based on that idea, and that became like the project that won the the yeah the, the grant at Arts at CERN. That's how we actually came with the, with the grant. Uh, and uh, as a, strangely enough, we just got a a call from Monica Bello from uh, CERN for us in this second. <laughs> <laughs> she's, uh, anyway, she's, uh, she's just jumping on the, to see the show, the, the, um, the, the, the talk. Monica and, is amazing. Uh, we so, love her. So, yeah, so, so, so Monica, Monica was very instrumental in guiding you um, on a, through this project. You know, yeah. so tell me, so how does it feel to work when you got to CERN, how was the whole process of an artist? When artists say, I want to work in whatever, because they, they, they were not, not every artist was working in science, or, or was every artist in the project working in science? Uh, well, well uh, actually, we started looking at how, how, like the research that has been done at CERN, but uh, when we actually uh, were invited there, which was, was April last year, and we went with uh, Juan Jose and with the, well with Blondie. Uh, it was like the most amazing experience we got to to work with actually or to or to share time uh, more than work with uh, Jamie Boyd and Jonathan Feng, who are like the lead researchers of this amazing project called Phaser, and they actually, which is a project that is looking for uh, dark matter. Actually, it's like the lead project in in the search for dark matter in CERN. At CERN, and then they told us how were they gonna build this machine that actually became like uh, an experiment this year. They actually now had has the the machine done, uh, and together we we went to see uh, like the LHC and Atlas and all the experiments and Alice, and it was just like going to a to a place where like the the whole cosmogony, the whole history of the humanity is being constantly built and revealed. And is for, uh, for me particularly, it was like this mystical experience, you know, it's like going to like the, the pyramids of Egypt, something like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 
No, and I and I know that some artists, for example, they just didn't didn't come up with anything like what you guys did, but they they went through the spiritual aspect of it. Oh uh, yeah, they they want so like one of the things is like the one of the things that you were commenting in um, in the conversation that I got to see. I went to the opening of a when the exhibition Broken Symmetry is opening in Liverpool at Fact. Uh, directed by Mike Stops at the time, who um, was very, very key in, in the development of this uh, project. And then, uh, and then I went to the, you know, Barcelona one, BCC. So it's that, but it's the, they were talking about the, the conversation with the scientists and the artists. You know, how close the, the scientists cannot be absolutely certain, 100% certain of something, of a fact, because uh, and, and you were also starting to compare with the knowledge of the ancient, the ancestral knowledge of the indigenous tribes from the Amazons, for example, where, uh, where actually started the, the, the initial project that you presented for CERN was about the ancestral knowledge of the indigenous and comparing it to the Western knowledge. At the end, the, the, the shows of the exhibitions of Palunar became about something else and it became more about the cosmogonies and the, well, am, I, am I right? In the black holes, what every culture around the world has trying to imagine that, that the universe is what they think the black hole is. And, uh, and am, am I right? Yeah, mostly on, on dark matter. It became dark, a project yeah, on, dark, yeah. on dark matter because um, yeah, we had this opportunity to actually get to know Jonathan Fink and, and what, I, what I just talk, told about the project phaser. And yeah. then we developed this machine and this machine was Supralunar, which is the machine you have been seeing in every video. Um, it, it's like a it's, it's like a, a clock. It's like a clockwise wise mechanism. And we were thinking about this idea of you understand some some parts, some concepts and some parts of the world to machines, right? I mean, you can only understand the concept of time with with clocks. Otherwise, yeah. it's like such an abstract concept, right? But yeah. something like happens with uh, with dark matter is such an abstract concept. It's so, so difficult to understand that you actually need machines to actually try to perceive it, try to, try to uh, have a glimpse of what it could be. But it, and this is something beautiful that Juanjo was saying is that the important thing and the, the 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 important poetic thing about understanding that is that at the other part of a huge gigantic telescope of any machine, there's a human eye. And there's our, our understanding and all of our yeah ways to try to understand and to make sense of that phenomena that's that's coming along, right? Uh, so we are always the interpreters and we are always the translators of those of, of those phenomena, uh, those amazingly big phenomena. And and there's there's a huge component of humanities in science, you know, and that's very important for us as artists because you tend to think always of science like as this cold, rigid, like absolutely certain field of, of knowledge, right? But then as soon as you come closer to that field, you start seeing that the human eye, the errors, all our understanding, all our reflections of all the way that uh, yeah, we as human beings are into that is, is very important. So, so that, uh, and the machines of, of course are very important. Because uh, I don't remember who was the one who quoted this, but he said our knowledge is as big is as big as our machines. Oh yeah. What what, what was that? No, I don't know. But you know, I... but it's something that you mentioned in one of the talks, you know, because oh yeah, know. yeah, 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 probably. Say, but probably it has to do something with Bruno Latour, which we are huge followers. Yeah, exactly. Like the, the more complex, complicated our machines are, which they are always evolving, then our knowledge goes changing. Yeah. So yeah. We, what we know now is not really what we're going to know in 50 years. Yeah. No, uh, and that relation between between humans and machines are are very, very, very important to, to try to understand from, from our science. And Juanjo. And belief, belief is very important in the science field. It's you cannot really hear Juanjo. No? It's very really hard to hear you with the mask. We hear you, but it's really distorted. Hello? Yeah. So, okay. okay. I know this, like, uh, the, uh, but, uh, but I would like to hear, like, what is the, um, are you trying to say in Juan, Juan, Juan Pablo translates? <laughs> uh, okay. Can you hear me all right or not? No. 
No, 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 it's not better. So it's a, so why don't we uh, uh, can what do you want to show us now? Do you want to? Um, I'm curious about the video, for example, that that you presented originally for CERN when it talks about the two uh, parallel views of reality from the indigenous to the Western one. Uh, mm -hmm. You want to show us that, which I thought it was very interesting. Or do you want to, uh, what do you want to show us in the, last, in the last few minutes yeah. that we have? We have 15 minutes. And actually it would be good to know if there are questions from the, from the audience. You could write in on the chat. Yeah. Yeah, but meanwhile, uh, we prepared this other video, which is of, of the black holes and the on the different understanding of black holes from different cultures, because that's something that also was interesting for us, and is that one concept like dark matter or of black or black holes, uh, apparently is a concept that was quite just born in, in the science field and and in this part of that realm, but actually the concept of black holes, for example, actually has appeared a numerous way, ways in different cultures and different moments of time. So we created this, this piece, which um, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna share with the sound very, very low, so I can tell you, and Ale, Ale can tell you, because this was a, a piece that we did together. And it was about trying to understand the reference. Can you read the English uh, titles, subtitles? Like the one you presented in New York as English. Uh... No, I don't have that version. I don't have that version here. But I can tell you what, what this, is. this is. These are phrases from uh, Alam, from the Maya culture, with the Rig Veda of the, of the uh, India's culture, from the like, Koran, and different phrases where you can actually see the concept of dark, uh, of black holes uh, into different parts of the, of the, of the development of, of culture. And then we just try to visualization. So we visualize the, like the, the information. So this is like a history of H.P. Lovecraft, where he mentions like this demonic entity, which has this this power to to actually suck light out of the the sky. Creatures of light and darkness, also like in novels, and so many ways that this concept has appeared through time, and how they are always intertwined. So science uh, gains a lot from science fiction, and then science fiction goes and it from uh, from science and then of course the ancestral knowledge also has to do with, with that relation and those uh, what, blur are we, what are we seeing here these are your constructed images versions of what is um, yeah this what about yeah i mean for, for that this was a huge problem in translation right so uh, as, as i was saying science fiction gets from, gets from uh, science and so on and so on so it's always a translation and at the end, what we, what we did was our own translation of what we were understanding through reading those texts of, of what we understood uh, or, or what we imagined, right? Of that, of that uh, explanation of that, uh, the construction of the, of the concept of, of black hole. So we did all the simulations based on the text that we were reading and based on the researching that we were doing. Um, could you show us, the, um, do you have hand the, the work of GPT-2 that you did here in New York? In that next yeah, of course. Uh, please, if you want, Ale or, or Blondie or Banjo, uh, introduce that work while I'll, while I'll put it here on my screen. Hello, Blondie. Okay, so this project is very interesting because uh, we are trying to... to to work with uh, pioneer technology. And it was really interesting to see how these machine learning uh, uh, things and these machine learning uh, algorithms is, are, are able to, to be trained in order to, to create text that seems to be written by humans, actually. So maybe the, the exercise and, and what we wanted to accomplish was to train uh, these uh, neuro, neuro, ne uh, neuro net, this network, just to to try to make a machine to write the history of the of the creation of humankind. So it was a lot of databases about, uh, yeah, about the genesis of of the humanity from different perspectives, 
and trying to uh, create a robot that was writing this history. So in a, in a sense, it was like this sort of uh, robot and also like an angel that is trying to write the history of the world, but through the eyes of the algorithm that creates we, its own can, logic. Can we see so, the video while you guys talk? That, uh, we lost the second piece. I'm, I'm, I'm loading it because it has a problem. So one, one second. Okay. Yeah, so, no worries. So, so yeah, the, the interesting thing here is that uh, a machine is able to to write in a, in a manner, in a fashion that is similar to humans. So that really blurries the, the, the boundaries between how we can be perceived ourselves from a different perspective that is outside, outside us. And that's really fascinating, maybe a little bit terrifying, but also it was very stimulating to work with this kind of uh, neural networks that were available and they, okay. they are changing so quickly. Okay. So, yeah. Great. Um, if you guys don't have the video, then we we'll talk about something else because we, we only have five minutes left and we just, uh, and then we're going to close with that. Um, yeah. 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 Please let's talk about something else because I'm having trouble with the video. Okay. I, um, the, um, so, so what would you, we are going to finish now. What would you guys like to tell the audience that they, uh, Ah, okay, I, I have the video, so we can. Yeah, this is the this is the video. So it was this robotic arm uh, with this gigantic uh, GPT-2 intelligence trying to make sense of all the text of the creation of the of the universe in very different cultures and very different uh, yeah realms, and then it starts writing its own version. Try to understand and try to, yeah, a reflect. I know reflect is a difficult word, but try to making sense of what it has already learned. So every day it writes and writes and writes different parts of the of the like of its own genesis or something like that. And the text that it it writes are very very interesting and very disturbing because they yeah, it, it mixes read. like everything. Yeah, like it there, so we can read it. Can you put on it so we can return? Yeah, yeah, yeah I, can, I can show you. Oh, wait. So these ones were texts that you were feeding the GPT-2 about the cosmogonics. Yes, correct. It was actually written by the GPT-2 by itself. In this world that the Lord created, what is he seeking now for his creatures? If all creation is of the same kind, why is yeah. there no creation yeah. that left that is not identical? So it's like this short reflections on what you learned and so, so under some of some I don't know interesting and disturbing. Okay, so and um, what about like with the new the GPT three? Um, what what do you think that we would be able to do with the with that one? Where that is more than with that with the one you are doing now you are working with now. Well, the, the model that the GPT-3 based on is, is quite bigger. Is is yeah. I know, like a hundred times bigger than the model. I mean, the whole information structure of GPT-2. So it is believed that it's going to be a closer step to try to get the machines to understand like the the, the human language. Yeah. However, it's 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 always like uh, it's, it's always like running towards the dragon, and the dragon goes goes away and away. Because actually, trying to make sense of a, a language and a human process is, is more difficult than just the transformations and just the process that uh, an algorithm can do. But it's quite understanding to interesting to see like the the the, the approach of the scientists. So to the final point, we we're gonna stop now. Is um, what would you see like any similarities, like uh, differences, parallels uh, between the um, you know, the science coming from artistic group from uh, South America from the, in the, to, uh, to, the, to the North Atlantic, you know, Europe, US, Canada thing. Well, we have, we have, we have our, our struggles here in Latin America, right? And we have our own um, perspectives on how to understand our, our, our processes and our problems. 
And I yeah. definitely, I, I should hope that our technology and our way of understanding like the, the things should approach those particular problems that we have here and should actually became like a, a, a fertile ground for conversation for uh, the, digi the different ways of understanding technology, of understanding nature, of understanding science, in order to come with different and interesting proposals for our own project problems here in, in Latin America. And we have a lot of, there are a lot of ways of understanding nature and things and environment here in, in Latin America that should be heard and should be heard with the same importance that we heard the big like laboratories and, um, and scientific places everywhere. So, so, so I definitely think like art and, and us artists could, could help in that, like in creating spaces for convergence and for, for, for understanding and for sharing these views on the world. I, that's my perspective. I don't know Juan or Ali or Blondie. Yeah, There are so many mysteries around the universe and also inside our bodies, inside our seek, inside our knowledge that is uh, ancestral knowledge or technological knowledge and maybe just to be able to work uh, with different pieces of technology uh, helps to create new, uh, new connections and maybe new insights about uh, about these phenomena around us. So that's like the sensitive and like the power of creating like an immersive or uh, just like a beautiful experience, like trying to, to bring that light. Yeah. What about you, Alejandro? You come from the, from the world of music and, uh, and uh, what, are, what are your last words? Okay, well, um, it's not, not exactly music, but yeah, definitely from, from sound, um, sound synthesis and electronic yeah, totally. I mean music sounds. production, but yeah, yeah, there's music in there, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I, I think uh, now more than ever, we have to reflect on, on how technology is um, shaping our humanity and Definitely, art uh, is is one of the most powerful tools to to go deep on on that subject and and problematize and and yeah maybe just question and and, and think about how we are um, relating those technologies and yeah yeah and uh, Juanjo we cannot really hear you much but. Uh... We really hope mm -hmm. it get better. Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> Is it better? Okay. Yeah, it's better. So, so we have one minute and we have Yeah, to sure. Go. Sure. Yeah. So the thing about technology for us is that we want to to abolish the mysticism around technology. And uh, that's why we take apart uh, so many technical objects because uh, that's in, embedded in our, in our culture, as you said at the beginning of the talk. And it's a thing we like to preserve because it's getting abolished now. So yeah, abolishing the mysticism around technology is one of our objectives too. Yeah. And it's a very important one. Exactly. So anyway, thank you very much, uh, guys. That was um, a very interesting conversation. And uh, the, uh, for anybody that wants to get in touch with you, they just found you on Instagram as uh, Attractor Studio. Is that the one? With a, a studio with a E or without the E? With an E. With an E, Attractor S Studio. And, it's, um, and, and then they, they can find, and also Facebook, of course. And yeah. as you could also find their names on the um, here on the information of the Maker Fair and just uh, follow their, their postings and look at their website. So, uh, okay, thank you very much. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, Asher. Thank you so Bye. much. And uh, anybody wants to go see the, the Claudia Hart uh, doll, the Welcome to the Doll's House, I'm starting that performance right now, which is uh, social VR. Okay, bye.